Hey class, Professor Steve here. Welcome to our first lecture on ocean circulation. Uh, basically, uh, the, the, the first and main thing to remember is that the ocean has different patterns of circulation um, and occurs on, on several different levels. Um, it, it occurs at a very large level, so a kind of a global circulation, the way the ocean is set up and circulates on very long periods of time. And then there are ever decreasing uh, levels of circulation all the way down to uh, the wind blowing the small waves that you guys are, are more familiar with seeing. But today we're going to start with um, essentially, um, or at least the pattern that I'm, uh, uh, the schedule I'm going to follow is sort of starting with the largest scale of ocean circulation and, and working my way down. Uh, so the first one is essentially uh, the global scale circulation and in order to understand that you have to understand that the ocean is actually stratified into two separate layers. So what do we mean by stratified? What's stratification? So stratification means essentially that's it, separation into two layers. Um, we talk about stratification in in sediments, the layering of sediments. We see we have separate stratified layers in here. So layers that are separated from each other means that the that you have something that's stratified, separated into separate layers. The best way to think of the ocean is the same as if you have a cup of filled with water and oil. We know that oil and water don't mix. We know that oil is much less dense than the water, so you would end up with one separate layer of water and one surface separate layer of oil and then it's very difficult to make these two mix and that is a good way to think about the ocean okay it's not quite exactly as different well it's not nearly as different uh, the two layers as oil and water um, because they can mix but they are different enough that there is not a whole lot of mixing between these two layers okay and so in order to have this layering this stratification there does have to be a difference in density um, large enough to, to set this up and that's what we're going to talk about today or at least in this this particular lesson we'll talk about what sets up what creates this low density surface layer um, and it's very visible the stratification of the ocean um, when you measure um, many different properties of the ocean whether you're measuring a nutrient whether you're measuring the light intensity uh, not so much the light the light kind of penetrates based on how many particles are in the ocean and how 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 much the light gets blocked but when you measure the temperature certainly the salinity both two things that have a very strong impact on this third measurement here which is total density you can measure nutrients you can measure oxygen and you see that we have these these sort of general concentrations of these things in the surface layer and then a huge change in a totally different concentration of these things in in the bottom layer and we see this wherever we go to varying degrees in the ocean now the place where those things um, uh, make this sharp incline we call those the clines right so uh, if we're talking about temperature we say thermocline so the thermocline is where we get this strong stratification um, or this strong change in temperature the halo cline halo means salt so that's where the salinity makes this gigantic um, change in how much salt there is between the two layers the pycno cline uh, pycno is we we use to refer to density so this sharp contrast this bit large change in density is the pycno cline and the neutrocline is if we're measuring any nutrient uh, oxygen not really a nutrient but um, but anything necessary for life um, where there's this strong change in the concentration between the two layers, we call that the neutrocline. But for the most part in class, we'll, we'll always talk about this, the area where the two layers of the ocean are separated. We'll talk about it with regards to the thermocline. So this area is the cline. Most everything changes right at that cline, and it's almost always um, correlated to the change in temperature. Um, a strong change in temperature, salinity, and density. But so, so we'll talk mostly. We'll mention the thermocline. We're talking about that that area. How do we measure these things? Um, this sort of is a a, um, a very important tool in oceanography. It's called the CTD, which stands for conductivity, temperature, and density. And those are three basic things that it was originally invented to um, to measure. We send this thing down to the ocean. Um, floor or whatever depth we like um, and then we bring it up and we fire these little bottles to trap water inside and we can make all kinds of measurements on there but it also has sensors on it to measure conductivity temperature and density um, 
um, and now we have different sensors on there that measure all kinds of things like chlorophyll measurements, um, pH, and so on and so forth. Um, but this is a very stable instrument. Um, we can attach other instruments to it, um, such as the uh, the ADCP, which is acoustic Doppler current profile, essentially something that measures how quickly particles are moving through the ocean and uses that to calculate currents. Um, but we can stick all kinds of sensors on the CTD, and it makes it a very um, um, a very important way that oceanographer, an important tool that oceanographers use to to study the ocean. Um, I have this video right here posted on. Uh, on the main page of this of this unit or of this lesson and um, and you can watch that after this lesson okay so what are the major differences between the two layers before we move on to how they're set up uh, the characteristics of the surface ocean are high light right which makes sense because the surface part of the ocean is exposed to the sunlight lower salinity which makes sense because if it's the top layer it has to be less dense less salt less dense warmer makes sense also. It's exposed to the to the high light, means it should warm up more than the deep ocean, and warmer also means less dense. So lower salt, lower or higher heat means less dense, and that is essentially what sets up this separate surface layer. This this higher heat, lower salinity makes it much less dense than this than this deep layer. So what we're going to get into today is why does this make such a strong Stratifi stratified line with without having this m mixing here and why is the bottom so separate or so different in its characteristics no light um, is is sort of self-explanatory very deep you get less less light um, colder is sort of self-explanatory colder means more dense but when you're further away from the light from the sun's heat you get less you get um, less temperature or higher which makes it more dense, higher salinity, right? So why lower salinity in the surface, higher salinity in the in the deep? And we're going to start to get at that. Um, and then why this difference in nutrients? Why are the nutrients generally low in the surface and abundant in in the deeps in the deep ocean? So before we 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 go over how the surface ocean is set up, just a quick um, recap on what dif what, is, what does diffusion mean. Diffusion is the spreading of particles from area of high concentration to low concentration. And we're going to be talking about anything. We could talk about the temperature of air par particles, air molecules, water molecules, um, compa any other kind of compound molecule, any other kind of particle. This could be a pile of boulders, this could be a pile of people, this could be a pile of warm molecules, and the rest of this has very little of it. And essentially Everything always wants to reach equilibrium if it can, whether it's due to gravity or a concentration gradient. And so diffusion dictates that when you have a high concentration area of something, it wants to reach equilibrium by spreading out and diffusing evenly throughout the given area. Okay, so that's diffusion. And we need to keep that in mind when we're talking about how we set up the surface ocean. So if we have a surface ocean, we said that it is exposed right the very surface of the ocean is highly exposed or is the most exposed to the sunlight and we know the sun is a gigantic source of heat to the ocean right so dict diffusion dictates that if we have heating well actually let me take a step back this I'm getting ahead of myself so we have high amount of heat at the very surface but what what also is the surface ocean exposed to fresh water inputs right so we get rain which has no salt in it which hits the top, the uh, surface of the ocean. We have rain on land, and the water runs off through streams, which hits the surface of the ocean, especially near land. So we have a lot of fresh water right at the surface, a lot of heat right at the surface. And diffusion dictates that as that spreads out, so we have high concentration of heat, which should diffuse towards the towards the um, towards the deeper ocean. So we have a lot of heat, a lot of heat slowly decreasing heat, slowly diffusing heat, and eventually we should have this gradient, right? This should not be this huge total separate layer of heat, but a gradient of heat. Same thing with fresh water. It should be concentrated fresh water. The fresh water should diffuse out towards the bottom and slowly gradient from very fresh to slightly fresh. But in reality, we have heating, we have fresh water, but we also have mixing because the surface ocean is exposed to also the atmospheric winds. So the, the, we don't get this slow diffusing gradient of heat, this slow diffusing gradient of fresh water. We actually get a well mixed surface layer. So it mixes all this warm water together. It w mixes all this fresh water together and makes it one solid 
uniform, fresher, right? So fresher means less salt, uh, warmer, fresher and water means less dense, but it makes this unified layer, which gives us the separation of the surface ocean. Okay, so a, a, unify, a uniform stratified layer. So where do we have exceptions to these rules? Um, where does this not work? Shallow water is the first one. So we have to have this mixing layer, uh, this layer where, and that is, that is a term that we give the surface layer also. We call that the mixed layer um, due to that characteristic. And so we have the depth of this mixed layer you could see is, is this deep here. Here's our stratified surface area separate from the deep area. And if that depth of that mixed layer is is too shallow. So in other words, if we bump into land because the water is becoming shallower and shallower, all we have is a surface layer here. There's no there's no deep ocean here because the the ocean is too shallow here. So shallow areas are are an exception to the stratification rule. There's no deep ocean there, right? No deep ocean. The other thing are polar and temperate areas. And this for primarily, especially temperate areas, which is like our area, the temperate latitudes, we have really, really warm uh, summers and we have really, really cold winters. So in the winter time, in the winter time, the surface ocean becomes so cold that it that it becomes less den or more dense and is less stratified from the ocean. So we don't have that separation. We have a breakdown of this separation in the winter time. And also in polar areas. So in the Arctic and in the Antarctic where the surface ocean is very very cold, um you know, we get we get this this effect where where it's it's colder, it's more dense, and we have a little bit of a breakdown of this stratification. It still occurs when we get into deep water formation. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But, but, but off the off the um, off the cusp, I want you to remember that it's the, the polar and temperate areas. So anywhere where the surface ocean can at any time during the year become very cold, and and make the density of the surface ocean clo closer to that of the deep ocean, and then also in um, shallow areas are the two places um, where 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 stratification and, and the separation between a surface and a deep ocean can can break down. So what about the cold bottom layer? Uh, well watch the video after um, this lesson on the on the on the main page there and then move on to the next lesson and we'll learn how the, the deep layer, the cold deep layer is formed. Thanks for joining me. See you next lesson.